Praise the Lord. Brother Philip, how are you today? Well, I'm wonderful. Thank you. How are you doing, Lord? I'm thanking God for Jesus. Oh, I'm grateful he sent the yeah. Savior because I need him. Yeah. And he's making himself real yeah. The whole world does. Yeah. The whole world yeah. does. I'm just glad one day he woke me up and let me know. Just call on him. Just thank him. Just praise him. Yeah. Just, just give him the glory and honor and praise. And he'll do the rest. Yeah. Yeah. And we, already got, we already got started. So can you just give us a prayer for his glory? Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. The Lord have in his way of man and his family and his house. And we'll do it all. We thank you. We thank you so much, Lord, for what you're doing. Uh, we thank you for your involvement in our lives. And we thank you, God, that uh, you were in our footsteps. We ask, God, that you uh, anoint every aspect of the service today, um, all the testimonies, all the songs, uh, the, um, of the word that's coming forth. Bless your man, servant, God. We pray that you hide it behind the cross that you be seen and heard. We ask that any that are on the way to get the trap and mercy, that those that are able to fellowship and make it to the service and those that are online, we you know how uh, each of uh, uh, needs. Um, you're involved and uh, we trust you because we have committed uh, the things that we're involved in and everything uh, that we do, we involve you and then seek your direction. We ask that you trust those that are I need healing in your body that you would uh, uh, continue to show your mercy to restore them, to bring them uh, back to full health, restore them, make them whole. And we ask for those that are going through a grieving or, or uh, 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 seem to be loaded down by uh, a different uh, search of circumstances, uh, we ask that they uh, committed to you and that you will move into your perfect Holy time. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. 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 We're going to open it up. For any songs, any testimonies, and any continued praises for his glory. Amen. I have a testimony. Go right ahead, bro. Okay. I'm praying the Lord. Um, I was, um, I had read this article from this sister, she was a, uh, a, uh, women's leader, um, women's ministry coordinator in a place called, um, Montego Bay, Jamaica. And, um, so she was saying that, um, uh, it, in her household, it got where they didn't have her and her husband, they didn't have enough food to eat. And so um, they would get paid once a month, and, um, you know, and their food was running out, and they couldn't understand why it was happening. We, we were, um, at this time, faithful tithe returners. They returned the tithe, and so they were faithful in that, and they were saying, well, you know, it seemed like they had more when they weren't faithful. And uh, so they were wondering why it was it that, um, you know, they, they seemed to, uh, they were in a fight, they were in a tight, and they uh, didn't want to borrow, borrow in order to make up that need. And so their wife, um, uh, Amaza, uh, coat, friend of the mother coat, she um, opened up a Bible, she went to a Bible and she was looking at Malachi uh, chapter 3 and the verse uh, jumped out at her where it says, uh, a verse, uh, um, Malachi 3 verse 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now who will say that the Lord of hosts. And so it jumped out, the scripture jumped out to her, and she told her husband, she said, well, honey, you know, we're, we're uh, this is a, a stipulated promise. We are doing one part of it, we're returning our tithes, but we 
um, have not uh, been uh, testing God to see if God is faithful. So they decided to pray and ask God, you know, tell them God that they were faithful in return and they tied, and that he, you know, would be faithful as he had promised when he said, prove me now, test me. And so that was in November. So her husband worked in a, um, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a factory, I mean, in a warehouse, but, um, and um, for food. And they knew that uh, they had moved him to the floor, and uh, so he was no longer supervisor in the factory. So at the next month in January, uh, usually the vendors uh, give gift packages to the people that worked in the warehouse. And so he didn't expect to receive anything. And this was, uh, you know, before they had, uh, you know, uh, prayed to God and, and told God that, you know, that reminded him that he said he would be faithful. So, so uh, that, uh, that December he brought home the first basket, and then he brought home another basket, and he had more than what they needed, and uh, they gave uh, food to their, uh, gave their food to some of their family members. You know, the scripture says that God will rebuke, verse 11 says that God, uh, Malachi 3, that God will rebuke the devourers for the sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of the ground, neither shall your barren cast forth her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord. Well, uh, back then, uh, everybody, if you thought everybody else was, uh, was uh, farmers, and that's where a majority of the people worked to gain income. And so what we're saying is that whatever you're living in, um, how would you, how would God bless you to bring in finances um, that God will not rebuke the devourer? You won't have issues on your job. You won't be trying to get you fired. Different things like they, uh, 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 things where people, people provoking you and people doing their job. Uh, whatever your income is, when you're faithful, I can remember, I'm through with this testimony, I can remember after my car had gotten burnt up, after I took the, set, the tithe money, I bought the car, and I needed to get something repaired, and I spent my tithe money to get the car repaired so I could ride in the car. When I rode the car over there uh, 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 one day, and the car caught on fire, it got burnt up. So, um, you know, so I, I realized that when you touch after having that experience of not returning to God, his funds, when they, and he even says, uh, bring uh, 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 your first fruits, uh, your increase, and you get an odd job or something comes in, won't forget about God, uh, you know, uh, get return on him, uh, a, a tithe and offering or even on that unexpected. And so anyway, so I learned that uh, from that experience that even when I was in attending church, I would still save up and keep my tithing. And, and you know, when it got so much of what I heard was, I would drop it by the church, even though I wasn't going to give it to one of the faithful elders or one of the deacons. So I just wanted to care and encourage that my testimony is that we can believe God because he's faithful. Amen. Amen. Thank you. allowing me to come out this morning. Amen. I don't want to thank God for seeing my sister Amen. this morning. Yes. And thank God for just being who he is. Yes. Amen. 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 to God, to the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I just thank God. I thank God for how he moved this morning, how the spirit dropped in here. I'm not going to try to sit here and explain what things that's been riding me and haunting me and trying to hold me back and trying to make me give up, trying to make me doubt, having me go to God with negative things on my mind. I watch him bless. It's good to see Aunt Carol this morning. Good to see Carol, my daughter. I just thank God. That's all I want to say. I need you, Lord. I need you. Every hour I need you. We need you, Lord. Bless us now, Savior. We come to thee. Amen. Just a little, not just a part of 
Praise the Lord. Let's give him some thanksgiving. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some glory. Let's give him some honor. Thank God for Jesus. He sent a Savior. And boy, we need him. I tell you. I can't thank him enough. Can't thank him enough for the testimonies. The promises that he makes. The things that he can bring to pass. So worthy. You wanted to say something, Audrey?
deserve the glory and the things of the Lord, getting stronger in the things of the Lord. And, and 
Daryl is going crazy, going running the women out, spending the messing all his money up, doing just doing everything wrong. But it did not affect her because she had gotten into a place with the Lord where she was covered by the blood, where she was being able to act and respond to the situations around her like Jesus did nothing move Jesus. Because Jesus had the spirit of God in him. And Jesus has given us the ability through his sacrifice to have that same spirit in our lives. And then um, Daryl gave his testimony of how jealous he got. How is she going to have all this peace? And I'm out there doing this, that, and running this, that, and going all over. But she, she's still getting delivered. She had to go get a job. And Daryl was a very well-off person when I found out who Daryl was. Very well-off person. I had heard about Daryl before. And uh, she had to go out and get a job. So she went out praying, the Lord leading her, telling her what to do and how to do it. And she went and got a job and provided for the family. And what she did, just like the gospel says, you know, she, she wouldn't, she, 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 she said, if he said, if you'd be pleased to stay with him, stay with him. You know, because you never know if he's going, your life is going to change his, or her life is going to change you. You know, you know, his life is going to change his, or her life changes her. But whoever has the life of Jesus in their life is going to change not only them, but everything around He accepted the Lord, and he wanted that which she had because he realized all of his running, all of his drinking, all of his lying, all of his cheating, all of his stealing, he had no peace in it. And she had peace. She had love. And he accepted the Lord. And they got a, a beautiful book out. I don't even know the name of it because to me, the only book you really need to read is the Bible. Because the Bible is the book that tells you what God will do for you if you accept his word and trust in him. Come to find out that brother was Daryl Strawberry. I couldn't believe it because I had heard, you know, I knew that the brother had a rich life. Yeah, he, had a, he, you know, he was a baseball player. I mean, the guy was really a good place baseball player. And, and, and he was really good. But you heard all about how his life was destroyed and how the drugs and how all this stuff had happened in his life. But I didn't hear nothing about it. he got saved and how the Lord has changed him and how the Lord has delivered him, how the Lord came into his wife's life and all those things. But they did write a book about it and everything. And, I, and you know, there's so many things like the, like the word that God said. If, it, if they were all written what he's done, the world, you know, they, they, I heard one guy said the libraries of the world. Nah, 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 nah. I'm talking about the whole world. I'm talking about from, from, from the top of the earth all the way to behind the skies and from the depth of the sea all the way up there. If it was told what he's done in 2,000 years, the world, I, I don't believe the world could hold it because I'm, I'm seeing him do things even for me every day. Even for people that I don't even know every day that nobody else could do but him. And I am so grateful that he, that God sent a savior that I can't thank him enough. Because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask to think according to the power that works in us. Let's just read uh, the word. Let's just pray. I just want to just thank God and prayer and thanksgiving as his word goes forth. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that has expired this day, everything that you've done, that you had your presence in the midst of your people. Your people brought you in the midst, Lord, in, in, in praises and thanksgiving and in giving you the glory and honor and thanksgiving for coming into their lives, Lord. We, we want to thank you, Lord, for all your mercy and grace that you've poured out into our lives, that you sent a Savior that comes into our life and helps us through all these situations we might in. Lord, we bind up the enemy in the name of Jesus, Lord, and all the works of the flesh and everything that is contrary to you, Lord, we put under the blood. Lord, we ask that you might cover me under the blood, Lord, and that every word that might come out of my mouth be for your praise and your glory and your honor and thanksgiving unto you for all that you've done for all of your people, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you thought about us, Lord, and that you sent a Savior, and that you're doing only the work that you can do, Lord. We just thank you and ask that you continue on in your word and your truth. And let everybody say amen. Amen. And we just want to read Psalms 122. 
And it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment and the thrones of house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palace. For the, my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee, because the house of the because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. I just thank God for His precious word that is able to be fulfilled in our life by the Son that He sent in the name of Jesus. Amen. The title of this message is Jesus, the Word of God. You know, I'm so glad that God sent a Savior to tell us all the things that God has for us and how and what God is going to and will do in our lives. Let's go to Revelations, the 19th chapter, for a description of Jesus, the Word of God. It's Revelations, 19th chapter. And I want to start at the 11th verse. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Thank God. I feel that. Feel the Spirit. Thank God. He sent his Word to tell us what he can do for the people that trust and believe in him. I tell you, it's a wonderful life having Jesus inside of your life. Letting you know that there's somebody that's sitting right now at the throne of grace with all power and all authority at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and hearing your prayers and answering them. Thank you, Lord, Sister Clara is in the midst today. We give you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, that Sister Carol's daughter is in the midst. Thank you, Lord, for keeping the people that we pray for and called on your name to keep and showing yourself strong in the midst of your people and for all the songs and the testimonies and all the glory that God has put in the midst of his people. Let's go to John, St. John. And I want to go to the first chapter, first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Can't thank him enough for sending, for doing, and making the sacrifices he made so that we could be redeemed by his precious blood. I was thinking about how I never forget Brother Will. He had made a statement one time of, of what God did to redeem mankind back to himself. He said he broke himself up into three parts so that he might redeem mankind. He sent the Holy Ghost first to convict and convince us of the realities of God, how much God feels and loves each and every one of us. He sent Jesus, the indwelling Jesus, that can come inside of you and make a change that nobody else can make in your life. Start to tear down sin in your life. Start to bind up that man of sin that had controlled man for so long and start to put him down and start to destroy the works of the flesh and start to rebuke the powers of Satan that has always controlled man until Jesus came into the world. And then, even in Christ, dwell the Spirit of God that can give you that life, that more abundant life that only God has through Jesus Christ and that divine nature that he has available for mankind through the tree of life which he had in the garden that can be in the midst of the people 
that trust in him. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, the more abundant life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same for a witness, to bear witness of that light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name and we are believers Amen. in the name of Jesus which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God our birth came from the Holy Ghost touching our lives fertilizing that seed of faith and bringing forth the spirit of Jesus Christ and I just thank God that he's given us power, not just to be disciples of God, not just to be servants of God, not just to be friends of God, not only to be children of God, but to grow into brothers of Jesus and even sons of God. Salvation is a growing experience, just like life is a growing experience. Every day, that you wake up, you have the ability to give him praise and thanksgiving. Every day that you wake up, like Amar was saying, you have the ability to grow a little bit stronger in Jesus. You know, on the football field, they say, I want to grow, I want to get better 1% every day, just a little bit every day. Every time you open up this word of God, you have the ability to grow stronger every single day. Every time you open it up one time a day, two times a day, three times a day, you wake up with it and you go to bed with it, that spirit, he never sleeps, no slumbers. He'll talk to you at night. When them, and run them demons and devils away and give you peace that you can just rest and just be renewed by the power of his spirit and the presence of his love, peace, and all the fruits of his spirit and all of the divine nature of his being. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's what he was full of. John bear witness of him, crying, saying, He was of whom I spake, that cometh after me, that is preferred before me, for he was before me. Verse 16, And of his fullness had all we received grace for grace. The fullness of God through Jesus is available to mankind because of his sacrifice. He is able to fill us up completely with his spirit and purge us completely with his power. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The grace of God, which is different from mercy. Mercy is you not getting what you I always like the way I heard this guy say it. Mercy is you, you being condemned because you murdered somebody and you're in prison and, and, and the warden says, all right, I'm going to let you out because, you know, I found, you know, you got mercy. We're going we're gonna to forgive you for that. And we're going to get you out of here and let you go. And you go right back to the same old environment that you always came out of that caused you to act and react the way that you acted and reacted. And you did and you were just surrounded by the same types of people that 
that, that were driven by those spirits because we, we have learned it's not about people, it's all about powers that are destroying and running mankind if you don't have Jesus in your life. And usually, they go right back to what they were in. But the grace of God is you getting something that you don't deserve. That's like the warden saying, yeah, I'm going to let you out of prison, but guess what? I got my limousine parked outside, and I'm going to take you to my house. And I'm going to put you, and then when you open the doors and you go in my house, everything in my house is yours. The, you know, the clothes and everything. And, you know, I'm going to be there with you. So I'm going to give you people around you that are going to praise me and thank, thank me for what he's done for you. In other words, he changes your environment, the things around you, because he's got the power to rebuke those spirits, rebuke those powers. And not only that, put down the works of the flesh that have controlled you all of your life. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, and that's the truth that came from God. See, the truth from God is different than the truth that we have. Our truth is how we feel about stuff, our opinion about stuff. God's truth is what he said he will do if you believe him. What he said he will do. He said in Malachi 3.1, yeah, you know, shall a man rob God? You rob me in tithes and offer. If you do what I asked you to do. I will pour out a blessing you can't contain. I see it happening around. I see him pouring out blessing and protecting what's around you. This week, I got up. I think it was Monday after the holiday. By the grace guy, got up. I looked and you know I checked the accounts every day, church account, my account, so forth, little family account. And I looked at the account. Nineteen hundred dollars was missing from my personal account. I said, wow, where did that go? Somebody named T-I-A-P-S-Y-W-A-Z. It looked like an a Asian name. Had taken, had cast a chip under their name, under my name. So I, I went right, right, to the, right to the bank and said, I didn't, I didn't write this, man. <laughs> I didn't write this chip. I need that money. My insurance is due, things is do like that. No. Thank God he kind of, I had a couple, I had some difficulties a few weeks, a few weeks ago that thank God through his, his body of Christ helped me out in. And I was just getting back to where I could bless the body of Christ again. And I said, man, they didn't got me for $1,900. So they put a stop on it and everything. But you know, they even hit the church one time, not long, a couple times. But you know, every time, the Lord never let the enemy get through. So I woke up two days later, the money was back inside of my account. So I just thank God for all the things he does to protect his people and, keep, and, and, and continue to, uh, to show that his word is true. See, everything he says is true. That's a come whenever I read this Bible and God tell me something and somebody else says something different than what God said, Guess what? I don't even hear it because I know God said the truth. And even though it might not be done today, God is able to do it. Because see, the God that we serve got all power. Amen. See, it ain't about us, me or you. It's about the one that's in your life making the difference, making the change. I know, and Sister Claire is giving giving God glory by waving her hand. Praise God. Because I know what you're living under, sister, because I'm experiencing something like the same thing. But I can look at you and say, Lord, you brought her through. You brought her through. Yeah. 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 See, he ain't no respecter of person. See, see, if you honor him, he will bless you. And he will show you, hey, I got a testimony that you don't have to be beat down by what's going on around you because I can come into your life and I'll lift you up. I'll show you that I got all power over the enemy, all power over the power of darkness, all power over Satan and all of his minions and billions. And I can give you joy. I can give you peace. I can give you love when it ain't none of that around you. We bless. We are blessed people because God is coming to our lives 
to do what nobody else can do but him. And you know what? The only people can see is those that he's opened up their eyes to. See, Jesus made a statement about his folks. He said, blessed are your eyes, for they see. Blessed are your ears, for they hear. And blessed is your heart, because it has been converted. Jesus himself has changed you and made you and is making you like him. And you're able to praise and thank him for all that he's doing in your life. Let's go to the first John. First chapter. That's first John, first chapter. We're going to go into the first verse. That which was from the, the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled the word of life. This word has power to give life. He said, Behold, I come in a volume of a book to do thy will, O God. That will is to bring mankind back to him, to give them the abundance of life that only he possesses. He said, The thief and the robber has come to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. For the life was manifested. And that's what he does. He manifests his life in us. As we read his word, as we accept his will, as we be in agreement with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Word of God, as we acknowledge you are truth, God. You are right, God. Change me, make me, deliver me, purge me, cleanse me. Help me through all the different things that I'm through, Lord. And I will praise and glorify you forever for being in my life. And as that manifestation starts to feel inside of you, and you start to feel his power, and you start to feel his healing and his deliverance and his love and his peace that only he can provide for you. You don't even know where it's coming from. I don't know where it's coming from, but I can feel it right now because I, I feel good. I feel good. And I thank God he can make me feel good because everything around me makes me sad. But God sent a Savior that can make you feel good. Yeah. The life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness, which was with and show unto you that eternal life.